If you ask anyone why they're not looking at an EV, number one reason, range anxiety. Is it real? What about me? Did I suffer from it? Well, I have to say, I actually did. The first time I got in my car and it got anywhere down to about a hundred mile range, I was panicking, where am I gonna charge next? But range anxiety is something that, it's just a learning curve. It's different from filling up with petrol. That's all it is. So let's have a look at what range anxiety is. Is it a genuine concern? And what can you do to eliminate it? Greetings Titans, I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. So we're looking at range anxiety and absolutely true, when I picked up the car for the very first time, it had a full battery from the Tesla garage and I set off home and as it clocked down, as it was heading home, I was starting to look at it and I had no idea how far it could go at that point, never driven one before, uh, never looked at the range before, and I must admit, it is an actual concern. Now, it may be unjustified, but I have to say, it is a genuine concern. So what we're going to look at is what actually is range anxiety. Why do we get it with EVs and we don't get it with petrol? And what can we do to try and get rid of it altogether and make an EV driving experience very much better? So if I stop and ask people, have you got a petrol car? Yes. What's the range of it? Nobody has any idea what the range is. They don't know. All they know is when it goes down low on petrol, they fill it up at the garage. And that really is the key to why you don't suffer from range anxiety with a petrol car. Most people don't know what the range of the car is, but it doesn't really matter. First reason it doesn't matter is because you do it every day, every single day of your driving life. You've driven the car, if the fuel gets low, you pull into a garage, you fill it up. So this is just second nature to ICE car drivers. So it's no longer of any concern or scare or anything like that. So the second thing is, it's the unknown element of how do you charge an EV when you haven't got one? Uh, what's it gonna be like? Is it difficult? How long will it take? Does it take hours as some of the uh, critics actually say? So you don't know how far the car's going to go, but you don't know where you're going to find a charger and you don't know how long it's gonna take when you get there. And those two are the actual critical differences with an EV and a petrol car. You know exactly how long it takes to fill up with petrol, assuming there's no queue, and you know how long it takes to pay for it and drive off. And you also know from years of driving how often you have to fill up. So that's a, that's a total known entity, so it's no longer a mystery. But with an EV, particularly when you get your first one, or more so when you haven't even got one and you're thinking of one, these are big issues to you. So the range anxiety is really simple. The range anxiety is the, uh, the fear that you are going to run out of battery. It's as simple as that. So any car, whatever fuel it has, be it uh, petrol or diesel, hybrid or electric, it has a range. If you fill it up, the battery or the petrol tank or the diesel tank, you can drive so far. And if you just keep driving, at some point you run out of that fuel and the car stops. With a petrol car, obviously, all you do is pull into a garage with an EV, all you do is pull into a public charger, or a home charger if you're near home. So the principle behind it is exactly the same. The difference is that whereas you know where all your garages are, because you've used them for maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years of your life, you don't know where all the EV chargers are. You don't know the different plugs, the power ratings, the, uh, what app do you need? Do you need a special card? Do you need contactless? How does it work? So the unknown, when your electric car starts running out of fuel, out of battery, it's an unknown entity. How are you going to top it up? Now, I'll tell you a couple of things. The first thing is really simple. Once you've done it a little while, this becomes as second nature as filling your car up with petrol used to be. So this is not something that you are going to suffer with from the rest of your life. Uh, it is something that you will go through and you will then uh, suddenly realize, hey, uh, this is nothing really. Um, the second thing is there's an awful lot you can do to make your life much easier so that you don't suffer from range anxiety. We're gonna cover those in a second. There's some really simple steps you can take. But over a period of time, you will get to know, 
on your chosen routes where your public charges are and once you know where they are you don't have to search apps every time you don't have to go on route planners you don't have to go on um, anything else to look for your charges like a petrol station you know where they are so if you're always doing a set route from a to b and you need to charge on the way once you've found somewhere to charge that's it you're sorted you'll always use that one unless you can come across a better one and if you come across a better one you just switch to that one and stop using the first one so that's the first thing is this will happen in time you will just get used to i now know where i'm going to charge my ev when the battery runs low but the secret in the early days is to do what I did. Uh, I was terrified when it got down anywhere near a hundred mile range still. Um, so what I did was I made sure I never got near a hundred mile range. Every time I'd gone out for the day and I'd done 20 or 30 miles, I just came back and topped it up. And it meant that every journey I went on, I actually had a full battery. And a full battery on this is about 250 miles, which, that's a massive journey if you're doing it in one go. So I never actually, after the first day, suffered from range anxiety because every day I got in my car, I knew I could drive 250 miles without stopping, without charging. So that's the first way you can start eliminating uh, range anxiety. The second thing I did was I wanted to see what would happen as I got nearer to actually running out. Um, I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like. So the simple answer is, let's try it. And so while I was still fairly close to home, so at any time I could have stopped and just gone home and, and plugged it in again. Uh, so I wasn't in any real danger, but I thought I'd start running it down a bit lower and see what was happening. And as I did that, I found out that, well, nothing happens. It just reads less on the mile meter. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And then the... Big turning point for me was one long distance journey I did where I'd been down to Birmingham. And this is just over a hundred miles. So I set off with a full tank, full battery, went down there. I did quite a bit of driving around while I was down there. And then when I was ready to set off back, I didn't believe I would actually have enough charge to get home. So I entered my home address into my uh, onboard route planner and I was expecting it to tell me to stop on the way and do a top-up charge, uh, which I uh, have done on many occasions. And on this case, it didn't do it. And it surprised me because what it said was, you actually have enough charge to get home and you'll get home with seven miles of range left. <laughs> seven miles out of 250. And I thought, there's no way this is gonna work. Now, on that journey, I do have many stations where I can, many charging stations where I can stop at and just top up if ever I needed to. But I thought, this is a great opportunity to find out what it actually does and how accurate the, uh, the reading is that tells me how far I can go. So I set off and all the way, I must admit, the whole way I was watching the mile, mile meter telling me how much I've got left. And all the way, it was pretty much spot on. Every time I looked, I usually had between five and 10 miles left when I got to my, uh, my destination, which in this case was my home. And then getting nearly there, I actually found there was a diversion. The motorway was closed and it took me on a detour. And I followed the detour and it was still saying I could get home. And I actually got home that night with six miles left. And I tell you what, once you know and not that think, not guess, not calculate, but once you know exactly what your car is doing and how reliable the, uh, the, the gauge is, telling you how long you got left, once you know that's accurate, all your worries just disappear because as long as it says you've got 10 mile left, just go. And that really is the main secret I can pass on to people is in the early days, just top up as regularly as you can to make sure you never experience range anxiety because you'll always have a full battery. And then find out how accurate your car is in calculating how far you can go on the charge remaining. Once you've done those two things, range anxiety just disappears and it's a very quick process. I don't worry anymore. If it says I can do get home with 10 miles, that's fine, I will go in with 10 miles. And nowadays, I barely look at how much charge I've got left because I know I trust the car. Anyway, they're my top tips for you. Try and get rid of range anxiety. It makes your driving very much happier, more cheerful, more secure, uh, more sane. 
So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Totally free. It does help the channel. I'm Dave.